Oh, well, he's a little uneven, but that's okay. He was assembled from a lot of body parts. <laughs> so he's a little crooked. Um, <laughs> cake tutorial on our three Halloween cute spooky fun cakes. Um, I'm Kathy and I've been doing these videos. Um, if you are just joining us we do have two previous videos uh, should be linked below. One is our mummy unraveled video uh, and I start that off going over all the tools that I'm using today so if you have not seen that yet you might want to check that out just to get an overview of what we're using. Um, there's also our jack-o-lantern video that is also super cute and fun, gives you a good idea of a couple of other things you can do with the same set of tools. And we are going to end today with our third and final design, which is a Frankenstein cake and probably the most complicated of the three, but definitely still very cute, definitely still doable at home, and is a great fun centerpiece for your Halloween party. So um, what I do want to point out is we do have a new tip to add to our collection that we've been using. Um, you will still want your size 11 round tip and your size 3 round tip, but the fun new one is this um, multiple dot tip. It's a size 133 by Ateco, um, but it has a bunch of these little holes and it will give us a really fun texture of frosting for Frankenstein's hair. Um, you can also get a similar effect with a star tip um, or using one of the round tips to just do a bunch of little spikes. But this is going to be a fun little extra detail, so we're going to be introducing this today, and I think it gives the cutest hair effect. So, as always, we have our cake knife and our smoother, our little offset spatula, um, our three layers of cake. Today we're going to be using red velvet, like the blood of our enemies. Just kidding, it's a lovely cake flavor. It's just, you know, it's, it's tasty. I like it. It's my favorite cake flavor. Um, Moving on from that, uh, we have the cake board, our turntable, and we have three frostings with us. This is our Italian rang buttercream. Um, again, link below for the uh, tutorial on how to make that. Um, you'll want a good amount of whatever main flavor you are doing for your cake. I have a big bowl of white vanilla here. Um, you will also want some white frosting to decorate the outside of your cake, so make sure you have some of that. Um, I also have a good chunk of green frosting. We're going to be covering the outside of our cake today with green. Um, that I've just used this leaf green um, gel dye to color that. So have some green on hand and then also a little bit of black buttercream to do your hair and eyes and all sorts of little accessories. All right, so we will get right into it to crumb coat our cake. So when you start your crumb coat, um, you have your cake and your knife and the two colors of buttercream. I would keep that green right on hand because we're going to need that pretty soon. But to start off, I'm going to start leveling my cake. Again, I go over this in much more detail in the first video in this series, the Mummy Unraveled series. So if you're looking for a little more detail, check that out. But we will just zoom right ahead with this and get our cake crumb coated. Now, this particular red velvet recipe, it bakes up a little flatter than some of the cakes that we've been using in this series. So depending on your recipe at home, you might not need to trim off a lot of your cake. Um, so that's always recipe dependent, but you just wanna make sure that you've trimmed off any dome to the cake. So you have a nice flat surface. So there's my crumb coat. At this point, I'm actually gonna go pop this in the fridge really quick just to make sure this sets up and I have a nice, smooth, but cold frosting underneath. That'll make it a lot easier for me to frost the green on the outside. So I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge. Don't worry, we'll be right back. Okay, so our cake is nice and chilled. So the next step is to cover it with green. So I'm going to 
Get a good scoop on top. And I'm basically just doing the same thing, same technique as I would use to crumb coat the cake. But this time, you do want to make sure that all that cake is hidden. So be generous with your frosting. It will make life easier. I always think of it a little bit like spackling a wall. I'm just working it each tiny space at a time. I'm not going to try and spread the frosting all the way around the cake in one fell swoop. I'm just going to cover little sections at a time. And that just makes sure that my frosting isn't going to get too thin on me and that I'm not going to start scraping the cake accidentally. Um, this just lets me cover everything. And now I'll start doing some broader spreading motions. Here we go. Go back now to level the top. I always like to level after I've covered the sides because that'll just press the frosting a little further out over the sides. And then I can work that a little more to get myself a nice crisp edge. And especially with this cake where the finished sides are going to be smooth, I do want to make sure that's as crisp as possible. So I'll grab my, fondant, uh, my frosting smoother. Making sure to scrape the edge clean between passes. I'm just going to try and get that as smooth as possible. Awesome. Let's go back and just clean up those edges. We're going to add a hair on top, so you know what? If your corners aren't perfect, do not fret. They will be hidden. All right, I've got my cake cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and just clean off that base, get rid of all that extra green frosting that's smeared there. All right, awesome. So for the next step, we're going to go ahead and start adding our face details and little scars and neck bolts and hair and all of that good Frankenstein detail. So you will want to grab your piping bags for this. I have a piping bag of black. I'm going to start with that number 133 Ateco tip on it, that little hair tip. Um, so I have that. I have my bag of white. I'm going to start with a size 11 tip on that, size 11 round tip. And then also you will want a bag for green. I'm just gonna open that up. I already put some green in here earlier, but that was not too long ago. So we'll just refill that. I wanted to make sure I had enough in my bin to cover my whole Frankenstein cake, but just get that there. So actually the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pipe just a little border around the bottom of my cake. This is optional. If you want your Frankenstein head to go straight to the ground, you don't have to do this, but I just think it neatens it up and hides any little smears at the bottom of the cake. So I'm just going to go ahead and pipe a bead border all the way around the bottom. Again, this is a size 11 round tip. Here we go. All right. The next step is a pretty fun step. If you're doing this with kids at home, uh, they might really like this part. We're going to add the hair. Um, so you want to have filled your bag up with the black. And again, this is the number 133 uh, Ateco tip that looks like a bunch of little dots. You can also substitute in your round tip to just do individual little poof spikes. Or if you have a star tip at home, you could use that as well. Um, but this is my favorite for hair. I think it makes a great effect. And so I'm just going to start squeezing on little hair spikes. Whee! And I usually like to start doing a ring around the outside and working my way in. Um, you can be as messy or as uniform as you like. You could make it look like spaghetti. Give them curls. It's your Frankenstein. It's your monster. Because that's right, Frankenstein was the doctor, and it was just Frankenstein's monster, and we just all call him Frankenstein. But you know, it's just such a cool name. Just got to roll with it. 
And we're going to do a lot of poofs. Poof, 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 poof. Giving him very short, spiky hair. All right. Do do. Fill in all the gaps. All right. You can just leave it there. I also like to do sort of coming in on the side to just cover that corner a little bit. So I'm just going to do one more layer around the edge. Wee, tufts, tufts, tufts. Cool. All right. We have a full and spiky head of hair and I think that looks awesome. Don't you kind of want to just like pat it? Don't pat it. It will smear. Don't do it. But uh, it looks very pleasing. Anyway, so the next step up is to add the eyes. So where did I put my white? I put it over here. All right. So I'm going to start off with the size 11 round tip on my white. Um, and I'm going to, again, this part's optional. I always like to smooth out my shapes, so I'm also going to have my offset on hand. So I'm going to give him sort of these up tilted eyes, you know, our sort of sympathetic monster. I'm just going to draw this loop all the way down. Nice big eyes. Fill them in. Whoop. Whoop. I'll just go back with my offset and sort of make that a little more of a solid shape. Shoop. Shoop. Gotta do the sound effects. Tidy that. We okay. So the next step is you're going to want to switch out your tip on the black bag. You want to go back to that size 11 tip and we're just going to use that to first draw some eyebrows just following the same line of his eyes. Just little, oh so sad, he's not really sad, he's just he's sympathetic. Alright and then we'll give him some nice big pupils. Shoop. All right. And this is the, the game of endless tip switching. You're going to take off that size 11 and you're going to switch over to your size 3. So now we're going to go back with that size 3 round tip and just add a little, little mouth. I'll give him a little smile. Oh, he's so happy. And now with that same tip, we're going to go around and we're going to add some scars. And you can sort of place these at will. You're just doing some lines. You know, one long line and some crossing lines. So we're going to want to leave that space on either side of his head for a bolt. But other than that, you can really do as many scars as you want. Um, I like to keep them cute. You can make them real gnarly if you want, though. Like, go nuts. But all right. So we have all of our black details on. But you're going to want to grab that bag of white again. Um, I've switched to the number three tip. And we're just going to add a little pupil, a little, little eye white. Doop. And then, probably should have done this in the other order. But for the bolt, I'm going to go back to that size 11 tip. And the tricky part on this, it's best if they're both sort of evenly placed. So wherever you're putting your first one, you're going to want to try and mimic it on the other side. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a nice big round circle. And then right on top of it, I'm going to draw a smaller poof. And then I'm just going to turn it and try to uh, try to match it on the other side. Nice big circle. And then a smaller poof. Oh, well, he's a little uneven, but that's okay. He was assembled from a lot of body parts. <laughs> so he's a little crooked. Um, I don't know. I still think he's cute. So there is your finished Frankenstein cake, Frankenstein's monster. Um, that is our third and final cute Halloween cake uh, from this series of tutorial videos. I hope you have enjoyed them all. Um, 
Again, if you are just joining in, we have two more. There's the Unraveled Mummy one as our first one, the Jack-O-Lantern, and then our super cute crowning centerpiece, our little Frankenstein cake. So if you have enjoyed this series, please subscribe. Um, we'll be doing a couple more fun little tutorials. I think there's going to be at least one more Halloween one focusing on cupcakes, which should be awesome and is a good way to round out your Halloween table of fun and tasty treats. So. Um, again, I'm Kathy. I hope you have had a lot of fun with these videos. I certainly have, and we will see you later. Bye!